Yeah. And now we uh, this is third lecture on Turing machines. In the very first, I have introduced the notion of Turing machine, and uh, as a language acceptor, we have understood like uh, how a language can be accepted by a Turing machine. Certain examples I gave, and uh, how to give the output. The notion of giving uh, output in Turing machine is also discussed. We have fixed some notation for that, and uh, a computable function is introduced uh, in the last class. So, using Turing machine, we have two things that one is computing a function from strings to strings, so called uh, computable function or Turing computable function more uh, precisely, or uh, as a language acceptor where we talk like uh, Turing acceptable functions. Uh, Turing acceptable languages are recursively enumerable languages. This is what I have introduced. Then, I started uh, discussing uh, 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 about uh, how actually a complicated Turing machine, a bigger Turing machine, can be uh, constructed through some of the Turing machines that you have already constructed. So, for which we have started looking at uh, very basic machines. I have uh, fixed the notation for the basic Turing machines, namely. Uh, left, the left moving Turing machine, right moving Turing machine and a printing Turing machine. These are the basic three important steps that we pursue with the Turing machine. That means, at a given position, the Turing machine, whatever it is reading, it will move, it will take one left move and simply halt. So, the Turing machine, such Turing machine, I am representing it by L. Similarly, a Turing machine, whatever it is reading, it will take one right move and simply halt. So, for that we are representing it by R. and uh, I am calling for a given A in sigma, the alphabet, the P A, uh, Turing machine that prints simply A. Whatever it is reading in the current cell, there it will print A, the symbol uh, A, and it will halt there. So, these are the three basic Turing machines I am uh, L, R, P A. Of course, this is for all A in sigma. So, these are the three basic Turing machines that we have looked at. Now, when I am talking about combination of uh, some smaller Turing machines, first let me introduce a notation, uh, what it indicates the meaning of that and those things let us first discuss. That is as follows, if you take uh, two Turing machines, take two Turing machines. Now, if I use the notation this m 1 say symbol a let me write here m 2. The meaning of this is this arrow indicates that this we start the process at the machine m 1 this arrow indicates that and uh, the Turing machine m 1 with the whatever the input it will pursue and then whenever it is halting if it is reading a that is what is indicated on this arrow whenever it is halting if it is if it is halting with by reading a it won't halt rather it will connect to the turing machine m2 and pursue the uh, job whatever that m2 is doing now whenever m2 halts this entire turing machine will halt so that means Essentially, this Turing machine, if I write m, the behavior of m is m 1 followed by m 2 with a condition that whenever m 1 is halting, if the current reading symbol is a, then it will proceed to connect to m 2 and process the input with that. So, that is how the process is. Now, for example, when it is reading, uh, now let me give one. So, say for example, when it is reading B, for example, if you want to do it uh, as M3, now you have a choice here. When M1 is halting, if it is reading A, it will simulate M2, and whenever M2 is halting, this will halt, or whenever M1 is halting, if it is reading B, then it will simulate M3 on the rest of the input, whatever the current input available on the tape, 
and then whenever m3 is halting then in which case this will halt so this is what is the phenomena here the composition when i am writing this is how it is uh, the arrow is a condition here now for instance if sigma is equal to say ab blank then when i am combining say m1 this is the initial machine so let me call and for a i have defined say for example m2 and uh, for b also i have defined this is m2 and for blank also if this is a situation that means for all symbols of sigma if i am doing this i may simply write m1 is the starting machine then without any condition here on the arrow i don't write anything i will simply write like this this also i will write this as just simply m1 m2 let me follow this convention so so for that means essentially here i wrote uh, sigma is a b blank so in general for all symbols sigma in sigma if i have the situation these two machines are connected for all symbols of sigma then this is what is uh, m1 m2 this is for all sigma in sigma in this situation we are writing m1 m2 we don't put that arrow in between unconditionally whenever it is halting m1 it will simply simply connect to m2 it will simulate on it because for all input this is doing therefore this is the situation now let me give one more uh, notation also here which we may very frequently use that is for example i have the situation like this i have a b blank and i am connecting m1 to m2 for a and b so that means for non blank symbols of sigma if i have this situation then i may also write this is because here only two symbols writing two symbols is not a problem if i have 10 symbols here writing a1 comma a2 comma and so on a10 and uh, other than the blank essentially this i may abbreviate or use the notation that which are not blank here m2 this is how we will write this bar if i am giving other than blank for all symbols of sigma this is connected to m2 that means for fixed a in sigma if other than sigma if this is connected so so this m1 a bar m2 i mean this is m1 connected to m2 for all symbols of sigma minus that particular symbol a except a for all other symbols this will be connected to m2 that is the notation so the i will uh, use these notations very frequently when i am composing uh, some uh, smaller turing machines so let me just look at some examples you know the turing machine l if i connect this unconditionally to for example l then what it does this turing machine from the current reading cell it will take one left move it will halt that is the first machine but unconditionally whatever it is reading again since it is connected to the turing machine l what will happen it will take another left move and then as l is halting after one left move so this is a turing machine so that means the turing machine if i write l l is a turing machine that takes two left moves from the current cell current cell and halt so that is what it does and for example if you take this machine this the effect of this turing machine is null because from the current cell it will take one left move 
and uh, since unconditionally it is connected to R, it will take one right move and uh, it will halt. That means, from the current cell it will take one left move and one take one right move and halt. But actually here is a problem when I am saying left move, if it is say even in the first case or in the second case here the situation is if it is already at the left boundary for example, if the if it is at the already at the left boundary then the left move will make the mission hangs. So, the, the effective Turing mission will hang. So, if you have an assumption that okay, at least one cell is available left to the current cell, then of course, this mission the effect is nothing. And in this case, if you have first case, if you have two cells available to move to left, then it will take two left moves from the correct cell and halts. Otherwise, it hangs of course, if the two uh, cells are not available in the first case that hangs. So, that is uh, what is here, if you write this machine, so I will let me fix A for A in sigma some fixed A. So, I print A and uh, take a right move. So, that may be written like this because from the current cell in the current cell it will print A and it will take a right move and halt. So, I hope the things are uh, clear this is unconditionally I gave here. But if I give some uh, thing here, for example, if I give B here, where B is different from A, when B is different from A, then what will happen here? This will simply print in the current cell A and halts. The reason why, because B, when B is different from A, you know, in the current cell it is printing and simply halting, and this condition will not be satisfied and it will not take the right move and thus the effect of this Turing mission is simply printing A in the current cell and halt. So, it is nothing else but just P A. If B is different from A, this mission is nothing else but you know the effect of this is P A because B is different from A in the current cell you have A. So, it is not going to uh, take it is not going to connect to this Turing mission. Now, let us look at this, if I give this with symbol A for A in sigma of course. The effect of this Turing machine is in the current cell say first very first it will take one left move on the tape say let me say A 1, A 2 and so on A k is the input given to you and uh, assume this is where the input suppose if I am like this. Now, it will take one left move here, it will see if it is A, it will take one more left move and as a A k minus 1 if it is also A, then it will take one more left move and so on. So, if the input is sequence of just A's, then it will come till the end and it will come to here and since it is not A, it will simply halt here. See, this composition with a condition is very important to understand. Once again, this is take a left move, you come here. And now, if the current available symbol in this cell, if it is A, then, then it will take, it is connected to the same machine that is L. So, it will take another left move, so it will come here. So, when this is A, this takes one more left move. And suppose here the A k minus 1 that the A k minus 1 the symbol if it is not A then at that point it will halt. So, when I am giving the input like this whenever you are encountering non A that means a symbol which is not equal to A on the tape then the machine halts otherwise as long as you are getting A's it will keep moving to the left that is how it is. For example, if I give the machine this with a bar, this is on the negation of that. That means on the on the tape, on the tape, if it is if it is getting other symbols than a, it will move to the left, keep moving, and whenever it encounters a, whenever it encounters a, then it will halt. So that means this Turing machine. Now, we have constructed earlier. So, this actually accepts those strings x 
for example, let me consider here a b star as a fixed for example, where a is a substring of x. Now, you look at here, I have fixed the alphabet to be a b star. So, here are the symbols in the Turing machine that I am going to construct, you may consider a b blank like that. Now, with this notation, I need not say that okay, it is over the alphabet a b. You can have some another 10 symbols or 100 symbols or whatever. So, I can simply say in this situation, this Turing machine, if I write with this notation, the advantage is I can simply say x belongs to say some sigma star such that a is a substring of x. So, those strings which are having a that you are collecting in this language. So, that is how we can represent this. Now, similarly you can think of you know the um, connecting the right uh, the Turing machine which makes one right move to itself conditionally, unconditionally or whatever. Let me give a short notation for these Turing machines which we will often use here for a fixed symbol. Uh, let me write that to be A in sigma. If I consider the Turing machine, a bar, I means L is connected to itself, I may write this Turing machine by the symbol L A suffix A. That means, this searches for A from the current cell to its left, whether there is an A. Whenever A comes, that holds. So, this Turing machine is searches for the occurrence A to the current cell so if it is available it will hold there if it is not available of course when it is going to left it will hang similarly for a fixed a in sigma i will write r a to denote the Turing machine which takes right move as long as it is encountering some other symbol than A. So, this is keep going to right when uh, till it, it, it receives this. So, in particular if I say L ash is a Turing machine on the input if you give like this suppose some input you are giving normally we do not give blank in the input. If this is the input tape, this machine this performs this L ash performs. So, here it will hold. Of course, these are all blanks and afterwards needless to mention. So, that is how the situation L A. I mean L ash. Similarly, whatever is the symbol you write and with the suffix is what is it is performing. Now, using for example, these Turing machines, let me uh, discuss a Turing machine that uh, constructing for example, a power n b power n such that n greater than equal to 0 for which you remember that I have considered I think about uh, uh, 7 8 states to draw the to write the Turing machine the transition map of the Turing machine. Now, let us follow the same logic and see like how we combine the Turing machines x is the input given to you and uh, this is how we are starting uh, or you can write a 1 a 2 a n. this is the current cell. Now, we take a left move and see whether this symbol is A or B. 
So, based on that we take a decision. So, we have to encounter B to cross check whether there is A. So, take a left move. Now, you have two possibilities. If you are encountering A, then what to do that we will see that we should not, we do not want to uh, halt the mission in which case I may take left move, keep taking left move unconditionally it will go and hang. Now, for example, if I get B, then we are printing their blank. So, this is what the mission that prints blank and then go till the end of this that is L ash as per our convention and then take one right move. So, take one right move and then see whether you are getting A there. If you are getting A, you are happy, you print blank there, then take R ash. That means, it will come to this position because here you make this is blank. So, let me make R ash. So, from R ash again you pursue the same job that means, connect back to this. If in the beginning, I mean in the beginning or after a few iterations, if you are getting blank, then you are happy, you may just uh, halt. So, halting means you whatever you perform, even if I do not define here. So, anyway, let me say print blank. Now, the situation is when I am not getting A here, when I take right move, that means it can be blank or B, these are the possibilities. I can write A bar. So, in which case again if I put this loop that it will keep going to left and hangs and you see now how elegant is this picture. So, now you can quickly understand that how the Turing machine is working. Now, these are the Turing machines that in which we have used the Turing machine L, L ash, P ash, R. So, these are the Turing machines that we have used the basic Turing machines and what are the Turing machines and thereafter we have constructed and we have constructed this Turing machine. Now, this is the starting Turing machine indicated by you know this arrow, this is where you have to start and now give the input in the prescribed format and pursue the job. Now, you see that this Turing mission precisely uh, accepts the language a power and b power n such that n greater than equal to 0. So, instead of you know uh, giving the transition map very that uh, with uh, I mean huge number of states by following this composition or the uh, composition this kind of notation uh, I have followed to construct such an elegant uh, representation of the Turing mission which accepts a power and b power n. Now, let me give one more some useful Turing machine that is uh, right shift Turing machine or left shift Turing machine let me discuss. So, left shift Turing machine let me write this as um, S L maybe. What is the job of this? You give an input of the form x with this and what it does it transforms S L transforms this of this form. That means, the entire input whatever that you are giving it will shift one cell left. For example, here say A B A if this is the input given to you and suppose this is available on the tape for example, like this or whatever whatever it is. So, this after finitely many steps you will see of course, with the initial state whatever you call this A B A is shifted like this and finally, it will halt again here. So, when I am talking about these Turing machines, I am not the prescribed input is for the entire Turing machine, but a particular Turing machine when I am talking about if the respective places are available, then it performs the, uh, the desired operation. Otherwise, depending on the input given, uh, given to us, it may hang or it may, it may not pursue and all those things. But for the entire Turing machine, for a particular task, if you are constructing a Turing machine, the input format and output format they are fixed. Now, you see, for example, instead of this S L when you are performing, here I said I am starting with this with a blank here or whatever. Now, here if there are two blanks, for example, in the beginning, then the in the rest 
it will be you know one blank will be available because the entire input is moved one cell to its left where it is blank. So, that is how we are uh, we have to consider here. So, to indicate now you can ask me the question that for example, here if there is no blank that is not the hypothesis for this Turing machine because there has to be a blank that indicates that the input you know what are the string to be shifted there is one cell available. So, now to perform this task let me construct a Turing machine and see. So, the input assume uh, you are here and say a 1 a 2 a n is given so here is a blank. What do you do? You just go till this end and you keep shifting one one symbol to its left. This is how you can do and uh, to get the desired uh, output a 1 will be shifted first here then in a 1 position you can move it like this uh, a 2 can be moved and uh, from in a 2 position you can move a 3 in a 3 position you can move a 4 and so on. That is the process here I pursue this is L ash I will come first to this position and then take a right move. Now, whatever that I am reading if it is not equal to blank this is the notation very important you have to follow here. So, if I if what are the input that sigma I am reading if it is not blank then I take a left move and then at that place I print this particular sigma. So, the notation here is what are the input I am reading that symbol to be printed here. So, that I am I am taking in the variable sigma the sigma which is not equal to blank the same sigma will be printed here and then take a right move and uh, now further one more right move you have to take to continue in the loop. So, when you are receiving blank that means, you have reached to the end of the input then what do you do come one cell to its left and there you print blank and halt. This is how we can pursue you see once again what we are doing on the input let me just take an example say a b a blank I am here. Of course, let me use this symbol because here you require uh, finitely many operations. So, this L hash in the beginning that takes the cursor to the first blank symbol to its left that means, it will come to this place and of course, normally it holds L hash, but it has connected to R it has connected to R unconditionally. So, from here by taking this step it will come to this position a b a this is the situation r means. Now, the current reading symbol is not blank that is a in fact. So, it will take one left move. So, that means, now with this l this condition has been cross checked and uh, it, ha it is carrying the input in the variable sigma it takes one left move that means, it will come to this position a b a. Now, this is the situation. Now, there in the current position it will print what are the sigma that it is carrying it is carrying a. So, it will print a. So, now a comes here. So, a b a this is the situation now it takes one right move with this machine. So, that is now a a b a. So, one right move now in this loop again I have connected back to this r. So, that means, it take one more right move. So, it goes to this place a a b a this is the place with this r. Now, this is not blank again. So, it will take one left move there it prints the current reading symbol that is carrying in sigma that is b. So, now it will be a b b a it prints and takes one right move and further one more right move. So, that comes here. So, a b b a and again this is not equal to blank this is not a blank symbol. So, it will take a left move a b again there a, it prints a this is a. So, it takes one right move and further one more right move that means, at the situation what it does a b a a 
it comes to this place blank. Now, the current training symbol is blank. So, what it has to do? It will take one left move, there it prints blank and simply halt. So, that means this is A B A blank. So, this is how the input A B A has been shifted one cell from the current position to its left. The entire input x has been shifted one cell to its left. That is, that is what is the mission S L is doing. Now, similarly, one can think of right shifting machine. How, what is the process of this given input? It will leave the input in this format, one cell from the current cell. So, it has to shift this x one cell to its right, so that the, the format will be this. this now, take it as an exercise to construct this Turing machine S R, right shifting machine. Construct right shifting Turing machine S R. This is the notation, let me use. Now, let me go back and see uh, when we have constructed Turing machines for a power n b power n, the notation what we have used here, some of the important points let us look at here. So, it takes one left move and when a, b are blank, these are the three possibilities we have enumerated here. If the input alphabet has some other symbol, if the input alphabet has some other symbol, here in the first left we have defined for a, b and blank for all the three symbols whatever in this particular context we are writing we have written. If the input has some other symbol then the machine halts and the input will be accepted. So, in this case we have to restrict because we have to specify that the input alphabet has to be a, b sigma for which only this will work to accept a power n, b power n. Otherwise, as I had mentioned in the beginning, if any other symbol is encountered when it takes left move, it will halt and the input will be accepted as per our definition. Now, this is one important point and you see here we have defined for uh, A and here it is unconditional. So, at every connection you see for every symbol the things are defined here and here it is assumed that uh, sigma to be A B blank. This is the important hypothesis. Now, when I am coming to this Turing machine, here some other conventions are being adopted that is we are carrying the input because what are the symbol that you are reading that is shown on the arrow and you see here for every symbol first arrow is given for every symbol, this is for non blank symbol second arrow, the third arrow nothing is written that means for every symbol and uh, this arrow is for every symbol, this arrow is for every symbol, this is if this is given for non blank and this is for blank symbol. So, you see on, a, on arrow everything every, for every symbol the current reading symbol whatever it is it will work. So, thus you see this mission is independent of the sigma whatever that it is under consideration. Only thing is some alphabet is fixed and uh, on that alphabet this performs the job. You see this is the basic difference between uh, uh, the, these two constructions there we have to indicate that okay, the sigma has to be this accordingly it performs to accept a power n b power n. Now, assume in the previous case if sigma is a b c there are three letters and uh, now the you have the choice of uh, giving input with, with uh, some c is available. Now, in which case what will happen it will accept a power n b power n the, uh, the strings if you give a power n b power n anyway it will accept, but if, the, if it encounters c on the tape. Uh, and the input then since there is no definition then it will simply halt that is the problem. So, it will accept a few more strings now you understand what are those strings that it can accept if you make it easy, uh, if you make it independent of the fixed alphabet. And that means, here when you are combining Turing machines as I had mentioned you have a choice like uh, to what you want to uh, connect under what conditions you wanted to connect uh, the condition will be specified on that arrow. As such you know you see we have started with when we are defining Turing machine we have a formal uh, definition uh, for this Turing machine we have given it as a quadruple there is state set like uh, for the other automata 
we have uh, a state set uh, alphabet and a transition map and where you have to start. Uh, now, when I started discussing about these diagrams and all that, uh, now the question is whether is it using that generality that means, any Turing machine as we have defined that uh, this Turing machine the way that I am now introducing this kind of notation whether they are actually uh, as per the definition or not that you may have a doubt. I will address that S. Yes, this will actually follow the definition what we have defined. That means, corresponding to this as such we can give the corresponding state set and write as I mentioned that this will give this, this gives the advantage of you know not representing the states explicitly rather it will capture the entire idea of the uh, basic uh, uh, definition of Turing mission through state transitions. Now, let me give the formal definition how to combine this uh, Turing missions, then you will realize this yes exactly these diagrams are corresponding to the original definition. So, now for which let me first introduce the notion, because when you are combining Turing missions you require certain Turing missions to be combined that let me call it as mission schema that is a mission schema. The mission schema is a quadruple. What do you give here? Let me write by S a set of a finite set of Turing missions, let me call it as M and or same alphabet, let me say that is sigma and a partial map eta from where to where, let me mention later. So, this is M not the initial Turing mission, where M is a finite set of Turing missions is a finite set of Turing missions or uh, the same alphabet over, uh, over the common alphabet sigma and uh, M naught is a specified mission in M. This is the starting mission that we will. Uh, so, to combine Turing missions we have to give this mission schema and eta this is a partial map that is from given a mission and a symbol which mission to be connected when it is halting a particular mission is a partial map. So, why this is partial map? You have a choice that when a mission is halting, when a um, uh, halting by reading a particular symbol, at that particular symbol, if you have a definition, as I had mentioned, you will continue uh, to connect to the next mission, and it will continue the process. If there is no definition for a particular symbol, then the mission simply halts. The composite mission simply halts. So this mission schema is given as a quadruple here this is a partial map given a mission and a symbol given a mission and a symbol what is the next mission if required. So, that is to be given through this partial map this is mission schema and each mission each such mission schema represents because depending on that eta what is the combination will be de uh, declared and uh, based on that we will see that what is the simulation of that uh, rest, uh, representing Turing mission. So, here let me give that definition also. A mission schema let uh, uh, this S is M sigma as I am writing eta M naught be a mission schema so you are given a mission schema now yes this mission schema represents a Turing machine so, here let me specify mission schema with uh, this M, because this is a finite set let me call them as M naught, M 1 and so on say M n, there are n number of Turing missions or common alphabet, uh, where each M i let me fix that to be with the state set Q i as there is a common alphabet sigma that is what is here 
and for this m i let me take delta i to be the transition map and the initial state of that Turing machine let me call it as q i. So, for uh, 0 less than or equal to i less than or equal to n as for all these Turing machines let me take this way. Now, this s the machine schema s represents a Turing machine a Turing machine let me write that to be m with state set say q of course, the same alphabet sigma with the transition map delta and the initial state will be the initial state of the initial machine that will let that is q naught here is q naught and where what is q? q is essentially all this state set. So, here very important thing is we have to see that in the machine schema these are pairwise disjoint sets of states. So, that is very important here in the machine schema let me put that condition here here uh, these state sets the common alphabet and pairwise disjoint states is a finite uh, m is a finite set of Turing machines or common alphabet with uh, pairwise disjoint state sets. So, this is important that means, here if you take q i intersection q j this is empty for i different from j. This is the condition you have. So, there is a disjoint union essentially here. So, these are all disjoint sets and uh, to combine this let me pick up some new states say there are new states which are not there in uh, any of this capital Q i's. So, these are the new states with uh, the condition that uh, the p i is not in union q i i equal to 0 to n. So, this is the, that is how you have to choose uh, this state set. So, essentially when I am talking about uh, the Turing machine that is represented by the machine schema this has to capture whatever so far we have constructed because the original Turing machines will be lying there in the uh, in that circuit what are the uh, circuit that we are drawing the diagram that we are drawing. So, those states will also be will be there and these new states p naught p 1 p n one for each Turing machine that I consider for what purpose whenever a Turing machine is halting particularly for example, if m i is halting as we know that we should not the we should not make the machine the composite machine halt we have to cross check the condition under the current symbol if there is a definition to connect to some other Turing machine we have to connect it to that. So, if it halts then the machine uh, halts uh, the entire machine will halt. So, what we have to do a component machine a particular machine whenever it is halting as per its definition delta i here whenever it is coming to the halting state h we change the transition to you know by keeping to an auxiliary state for each m i I take one p i a new state instead of putting it in the halting state I put first in the uh, state p i for that purpose we consider this for each mission one auxiliary state p i. So, that is how these uh, states are considered these states are considered now you put it there and you cross check eta whether eta has a definition for that particular symbol at that particular moment if there is a definition that means what is the next mission will be known from eta if there is a definition then you connect it to the particular Turing machine and start simulating the rest uh, on that machine. Otherwise then you can uh, halt the machine. So, that is how essentially the delta works so, where uh, now let me give that also. So, this is a state set and now delta is defined as follows because in this four components in this four components m the q is mentioned sigma is the common alphabet and delta I have to define q naught is the initial state of the initial machine that is where the process will start. Now, delta is defined as follows. Now, delta is defined as follows. Now, this for 
this condition if the current state q is in the component q i what are the symbol it is reading if this and uh, the definition of delta i at the symbol q a is p b whatever it is then this delta at the state q a it will consider p b provided p is not halting state. If p is halting state it will not halt rather it will put it in the state corresponding to this machine that p i and whatever it is performing the same thing it will perform p i b if p is halting state that is how this performs. And now for states which are not in any of these QIs we have to define because here we have defined the first statement is for any state which is in Q i and the, now there are only two possibilities. If you pick up any state either it will be in the union of any of these states or any of these P i's. Now the situation is if the state is from P i then that means for just A in sigma now I have to give the definition for this P i's only that is P i at A is defined to be this halting A whatever is that A if eta of m i at A is undefined. If this is not defined, if there is no next state from this state at this symbol, then the machine should halt. Otherwise, whatever the next machine, if it is defined so and so, if I say qj, what are the next machine it is doing? So, you can do this, you can connect it to this. That the first state, initial state of the next machine is qj if it is mj. So, if eta of mi at this symbol is mj. Look, look at this transition whether it has captured carefully. There are two possibilities for a state and for each symbol sigma that I have to define because the transition map has to be defined for each state and the symbol. So, here the states either it is any of these machines or the new states that I have introduced to p naught to p n. Now, the definition here is if you if the state whatever that I have considered if I have to define delta of q a if this thing has to be defined you just look at if this q is in any of these q i's then you simply define as in that particular machine. In that particular machine if delta of q uh, delta i of q a is p b then you follow the same provided if that resultant state is not a halting state that is what is the con condition here. If the resultant state is a halting state as I had mentioned you do not make it halt rather you put it in that auxiliary state p i corresponding to this m i the machine because when the q is in q i that means I am simulating the machine m i. In which case you put corresponding uh, corresponding halting state that is what is p i. So, this is the condition here if it is halting state put it in p i. Now, the definition for when I have somehow come to the any of these p i's. Now, for each symbol a in sigma how I how to define it. Now, you just look at because if I am in p i that means this is auxiliary state corresponding to the state m i. So, you just see m i at that particular symbol whether this definition is given that eta is defined or not. If it is defined then we have to act one way if it is not defined you have to act another way. What is that? If it is undefined then you simply halt that means halt with the on the same in the same position that means since I am reading a I will of course do I have to do something so I will print the same symbol that is how the definition is given that is h a. If there is a definition eta has a definition for this pair assume it is asked to connect to m j then in which case what you have to do with this current symbol whatever the machine m j does in the initial state. Initial state of m j is q j. So, delta of q j a that is how it is defined. So, this is how the total map delta is defined for the Turing machine m. 
and uh, the mission schema given a mission schema that means a finite set of states and declared as with uh, some initial mission or common alphabet with a disjoint set of states. If uh, when eta is given that eta tells you that how the missions are to be combined and as per this you this to this mission schema that represents a Turing mission as defined here. So, this is the total uh, definition of that. Now, what you can do you just take you know some mission schema or some combination and uh, you can uh, what are the component component uh, Turing missions the respective states you can write and you see. Now, the question is if you are having you know some Turing missions where you have to use them uh, twice or twi uh, thrice. For example, if you consider the Turing mission L L. Now, if I if I if you consider if say for example, this you have considered the state Q naught because you know the Turing mission will have only one state. Here also if I consider Q naught then that creates a problem that you have to realize. So, realize the problem if you consider same Q naught here. What is the problem uh, as per the desired thing? So, if I consider here also Q naught the state set and in this component also Q naught as I had mentioned when I am taking two missions you have to have disjoint set of states. So, by considering same state set what type of problem that you will encounter. we encounter. So, that you just look at and uh, we will discuss these things in the, uh, in the next lecture. And now, for some you can write the mission schema and what is the mission schema for that and appropriate combination. For example, so, first understand that and accordingly whatever the missions that we have already constructed one is for a power n b power n such that n greater than equal to 0 we have constructed a Turing mission for which you write the mission schema. So, this information will be useful to you this is a useful information for this purpose. So, exercise 1 is this and write mission schema for whatever the left shifting mission we have constructed write mission schema. Because we have constructed composition of uh, uh, Turing missions. So, now first you realize what type of problem that you encounter if you take the same state set. So, what is the difference why we have to consider uh, different this thing. So, that how you have to represent those things that you should discuss in this particular uh, problem that will be useful to answer the these two what are the missions composite missions we have constructed write the mission schema for that and we will discuss the rest in the next uh, lecture.